You know, I was saying I, I wasn't sure if we were going to have enough bloopers. I was wrong. It's just me. I'm a blooper. In this week's video, we're going to be teaching you how to punch for self-defense and stage combat. What's up, warriors? I hope that you're all safe and well, and thank you for joining us for this week's video. We just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone that viewed our video last week. We managed to get to a thousand views and uh, although it's not big in the YouTube world, it was pretty exciting to us. As of next week, we're going to be uploading two videos a week, every Tuesday and every Friday. It turns out that Saturday at 5pm is a pretty awful time to be uploading videos, so we're going to change it. So from now on, every Tuesday and every Friday, you will have an upload from us. But that's it for now guys, we're going to head outside and do some pub work and then on with the lesson. Okay, warriors, let's do this. To punch means to strike with the fist. Punching is used in martial arts and combat sports, most notably boxing. We use wraps and gloves to protect our hands as they are fairly fragile. In fact, the human hand contains 27 bones that are easily broken. So in a self-defense scenario, sometimes it is safer to use the palm of your hand or your elbow. Now, there are many different punching techniques from different martial arts and combat styles, such as the hammer fist, the back fist, the leopard punch. But today, we're gonna teach you how to throw a straight, also known as a cross or a knuckle sandwich when punching to the mouth. A straight is a straight punch, delivered with the rear hand to the face or the body. So let's get into it. The first thing that you need to know about how to throw the perfect punch is simply how to stand. Now guys, in combat we have two stances. Orthodox if you're right-handed and southpaw if you're left. Now I'm right-handed so I fight out of the orthodox stance, but if you're a southpaw everything is exactly the same, just in reverse. So to begin, place your feet shoulder width apart. Take your right foot back one step and then half a step to the right and bend your knees. Turn your body side on while still facing your opponent. Now this is exactly the same if you're a southpaw, just left foot back. Now for your guard, we are gonna be looking at a traditional Western boxing guard as opposed to the multitude of different options that are out there. If you're orthodox, bring your left hand to your chin, extending it forward about six inches. Bring your right hand up to a similar height, but slightly closer to your face. Tucking your elbows in, making sure that you are ready for any coming attacks. If you're southpaw, exactly the same, but on the other side. Now this stance does depend on who you are and what your fighting philosophy is. Mike Tyson, for instance, works behind what is called a peekaboo guard, keeping both hands high and close to the face. While Tyson Fury spends most his time with his lead hand very low, sometimes even behind his back. Whether you are learning this to fight for sport, self-defense or stage combat, the most important thing is to be comfortable. Open hands, fists, high guard or Philly shell all work for different fighters, so pick what feels most comfortable for you. But remember the classic is a classic for a reason. The next thing that you need to know is how to make a fist. And with this comes the most important rule of today's lesson. I want you to take your hand, palm out, closing your fingers and tucking your thumb neatly below your knuckle. Do not let your thumb stick to the side and do not ever wrap your fingers around your thumb because I promise you, you will break it. Okay, right, um, so just speaking from personal experience guys, last year I was sparring and I managed to catch somebody with my thumb like this and guess what? She's right, I broke it and it hurts. And even if you can get over that, I had to then spar for about six weeks with one hand and yeah, that's not so fun. So yeah, don't be an idiot like me. 
Now you shouldn't keep your fists clenched at all times guys. Try to keep your hands relaxed until just before impact. This is actually something that Bruce Lee has spoken about, that you should be fluid and only solid on impact, like water. This even helps with some contact combat strikes that we'll be showing you in future videos. Finally guys, the swing. When we punch, we always aim to make contact with these two knuckles. So when fully extended at the point of contact, we should have a straight line running from our first knuckle to our elbow, making sure that you have the full weight of the arm behind it. A great way to practice this is using your index finger, like so. Imagine you are pointing at the person that you are striking, bring your finger back into a fist and you should have a pretty perfect striking posture. So now I want you to drop your chin, raise your right shoulder, corkscrew your arm a little and bring your left hand up towards your temple. If you watched last week's video guys, you would have heard me talking about rotation. Every strike on earth draws its power from the ground. But do be careful not to over rotate because it will throw you off balance. So rotate that back foot, hip and shoulder. Extend that right arm, bring that left hand up towards your temple, dropping your chin, raising your shoulder and clenching on impact. Now, if you want to look like a real pro, you must remember to protect yourself while punching. The number one rule is to hit and not get hit, but that's a lesson for another day. So now that we know how to punch, let's break that down for stage combat. We're gonna teach you how to take everything that you've just learned and apply it to stage and screen in seven easy steps. Number one, the fist. Just a little recap, guys. Open palm, close the fingers, place the thumb just below the knuckles so it looks like this. Number two, Distance. Distance is very important for stage combat because it stops us injuring each other. A good way to measure this is stand opposite your partner and extend your arm out fully, making sure that they are out of reach. It's very important that your partner does this also as not all arms are the same length. Number three, eye contact. If you watched last week's video, you would remember me saying how important eye contact is. That small moment of connection will make you aware of whether your partner is ready or not. Number four, the punch. So just another recap from earlier. Imagine you are pointing at the person that you are attacking, bring your finger back into your fist, and you should have the perfect striking posture. Last week we spoke about the L shape for the slap. Do exactly the same this week, but turn your arm like this. The reason that we extend our arm out so wide is so that the audience and our partner can see the danger. Number five, the position. Firstly, stand opposite your partner. Then one of you take half a step off center to either your left or your right. Now positioning the punch. The trick to stage combat is you don't actually hit each other. So your punch is going to your partner's shoulder, not the face. Always remember to punch across your partner. So if you're punching with your right hand, punch to their right shoulder. Number six, power. So for stage combat, it's important that you apply the power out of the punch. So soft in, powerful out. Now not all punches are equally powerful. So remember to adjust the power of your punch by using rotation. And finally, number seven, the nap. A nap is the sound that we use to replicate contact, like this, or this, or this, this. And we're using this as it creates a deeper sound and makes a punch sound more powerful, as opposed to a slap, like this. The most important thing about the nap is to hide it. So what I'm gonna do is bring my hand up here as I'm bringing my arm across to punch so the audience behind me can't see it. It looks a little bit like this. So to create that sound, what I want you to do is take your hand like so and cup it slightly and then place it directly below the collarbone. So that's everything guys. Remember that we're going to be posting twice a week from now on. So please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Bye! Catch you in a bit. So in a felt...